one heart back to the procession. I remain Samuel Ulemeta, aka Samuel Focus. In this video session, we shall uh, begin our study of trigonometry. And in this video, we shall just talk about what trigonometry is means, what it means, and we shall discuss has some concepts used in trigonometry. Uh, please, it is highly recommended that before you begin viewing this video, uh, you should um, you should view the videos on a plane geometry part one. Okay, it's highly recommended that you do that. So uh, there are some vocabulary words that we shall discuss. In this video, uh, let's look at some vocabulary terms. Terms. Uh, we shall talk about what trigonometry means. Trigonometry. What is it about? Uh, we shall look at uh, some uh, uh, prominent, prominent mathematicians. Some mathematicians. Some of them involved in trig trigonometry, you know, short form, you can say tree, tree, you know, say tree, pre calculus with tree. Uh, then we shall look at the angles, an angular major, uh, angular measures. Uh, we look at the triangles, triangles, uh, we look at the, we look at the initial side, initial side, we look at the terminal side, terminal side, we look at the uh, coordinate plane, the coordinate plane, coordinate plane. We talk about the uh, vertex. We talk about the standard position, what we call standard position. What do we mean if we say that an angle is a standard position. And number ten, we shall uh, we shall look at the uh, coterminal angles. Coterminal angles. Coterminal angles. Eleven, we shall look at quad rental angles. Quadrantal angles. Twelve, we shall look at the reference angles. Reference angles. Uh, uh, we shall also discuss uh, uh, length of arc. Okay, length of arcs of circles. Length of arcs. We shall discuss the uh, area of sector, area of sector, uh, we shall look at the, uh, uh, the unit circle, unit circle, we shall also discuss the trigonometric functions, trigonometric functions, Then we look at the inverse trigonometric functions. Inverse tree. Inverse trigonometric functions. Okay. Your 
cosine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse, sec inverse, cosec inverse. Then we shall uh, we shall look at um, trigonometric identities. Trigonometric trigonometric identities. Um, we we'll also look at a. Uh, Trigonometric equations, trigonometric equations, solving trig equations, you solve and check. Trigonometric equations, trigonometric graphs, trigonometric graphs. Okay? Although when we do a uh, trig functions, that should also cover graph, graph of trigonometric functions. Those are trigonometric graphs. Uh, we shall uh, have to now uh, we prove prove uh, we solve a lot of proof proof problems. Okay, uh, trigonometric proofs, trigonometric proofs. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, proofs in trig. Okay, when we look at the trig identities, we also look at the uh, half angle formula, double angle formula. It was that's a lot of proof, a lot of proofs in trig. And I don't know we if we, you know, I don't know if I skip anything, but any other business, any other business after that. Now, uh, this is a broad topic. Trig is a, trigonometry is a very broad topic uh, in mathematics. Uh, we will not, we, the, you know, you, depending on the course you're taking with me, depending on the course you're taking with me, you don't need all of these. You just need the, the, the topics, the concepts that relate to the course you're taking with me. Okay, so what is trigonometry? What is trig? What is trigonometry? Uh, and why do we study it? Uh, trigonometry is a branch of mathematics. Is a branch of mathematics. Okay, that deals with the study that deals with the study study of angles so uh, well, angles is very important in tree uh, please like I said earlier on we will not angles is vast uh, and I I dealt extensively on it on uh, my video on plane geometry angles at one you need to view that video I'm going to write it here plane geometry angles part one angles part one angles part one this is the prerequisite 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 Plane geometry angles part one. You need to view before you view this video. So, which I talked about extensively on angles in that video. So, trigonometry is a branch of mathematics deals with the study of angles. Uh, it also deals with the study of uh, uh, angular relationships, lateral, lateral sides. Uh, well, angles first deals with the study of angles. Then uh, it also deals with the study of the uh, triangles. Triangles. Okay. I did a video on Pythagorean theorem. Later on, you might want to look at it before we do trig functions. Before we do trig functions, it is recommended you view that of uh, the video on Pythagorean theorem. So, 
Study of angles, then try angles. Try, try. Try. When I did the video on try angles, try angles just means three angles. Try. Uh, because uh, try. Trinity. Trinity. Three persons in one God. Uh, try angle. Try angular. Okay. Uh, triune. Tricycle. Tricycle. Tricycle, the uh, uh, vehicle that runs on three wheels. Tricycle, tri. So angles, triangles, then uh, angular relationships. Angular relationships. Angular, lateral and angular relationships. Lateral. And angular relationships relationships of planar planar and three dimensional figures three dimensional figures Okay, so branch of mathematics that deals with the study of angles, triangles, lateral means sides, side and angle. Okay, sides. Or we talk of opposite adjacent hypotenuse, sides. Okay, uh, then with angular relationships, we talk of the angles. And then when we talk of uh, trig functions, we see the relationship between angles and sides. Sign of this angle is what size, what is the ratio of the sides. So lateral and angular relationships of planar and three-dimensional figures. Okay. Now, why are we studying three? Uh, I think I might need here, so let me just erase this and write here. Uh, trigonometry is used in trigonometry is used in these skills in these skills of life. Uh, number one, of course, the I mean the uh, one thing about trigonometry that is very popular is in uh, astronomy. Astronomy, you can determine the, uh, the position of stars, you know, the, uh, the planets, the location of the planets, the position of stars, okay? What angles are they located? That is uh, astronomy. That's where you have three again. Uh, you also use trig in uh, navigation, navigation, and it's still uh, with your GPS, uh, your radar, uh, your navigation, uh, your navigation tools. You want to uh, locate intersections. What is the intersection of this path with this path? Probably they intersect at an angle. Okay, location of places. People, things. Uh, you also use it in a, of course, you use a tree in a surveying. Surveying. Uh, you could, uh, you could look at, you know, like, what, what is the length of this? I mean, with trigonometry, you could look at it. You could look at what is the height of this building. Even if you don't measure the, even if you don't literally measure that height of the building, you could tell some, uh, uh, some lengths, some areas, some volumes, uh, just by looking at it because of your knowledge of trigonometry. Uh, uh, another one is in a, um, use it in a geology. Geology, use it in engineering. Okay. 
the rest of them. So these are areas whereby you see the uh, application of trigonometry. Now we have some prominent mathematicians. You know, the uh, trigonometry was used uh, by, uh, you know, we especially ge uh, geometry and trigonometry. Yeah, they were used by the early Greeks. Greeks, uh, Egyptians, Egyptians, and the Babylonians. Babylonians. Of course, if you look at a, a good example of this, you know, you know that um, if you go to uh, the Pyramid of Giza, Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, Pyramid of uh, Pyramid. Of Giza, okay, in Egypt, uh, you will see that uh, that the the uh, the value of pi, your pi, your pi, right? Pi. You know, this is a Greek alphabet. Most of like when we uh, uh, well, in this video, we I used Greek alphabets as angles because uh, the Greeks played it prominent role in uh, mathematics and in this subject three. So uh, you see that you, uh, the, the calculation of pi you can read you can read about uh, calculation of pi with the uh, pyramid of Giza. So the uh, trigonometry were used by these uh, early Greeks, early Egyptians and uh, early Babylonians. Now, uh, there are some other many prominent mathematicians that, uh, that uh, contributed to the study of trigonometry. A lot of them. Uh, we won't list all of them. I don't even know all of them. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna list the we're gonna list some of them, okay? We will list some of them. So um, let's start from now. Some of them will list, we have a Hippacus and a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right uh, Whoever, whatever nationality, please don't blame Mr. C Please don't blame me if I am not pronouncing the name right <laughs> Okay, after all, how many of you can pronounce my last name correctly? How many? Okay uh, we have the Pakus, we have uh, Hindus, Hindus, we have uh, Al Batani, Al Batani, we have uh, Leonhard, Leonhard Yula, Leonhard Yula. Uh, this guy is a Swiss mathematician, has a lot of contributions in uh, mathematics and physics. Uh, we also have a uh, Johannes Johannes Miller Johannes Miller. Oh, and I, I should have listed a very prominent one before this folks here. Yeah. Ptolemy Ptolemy Ptolemy. Okay, probably should have listed this guy here after Hippocrates. Ptolemy. Yeah. So this uh, and. And, and many more, and many more, and many more, including me. Why don't including me, right? Why don't I write my name here, Samuel Chukwemeka? And, and because I am teaching it, I am contributing towards it by teaching it to you, right? <laughs> okay, so we are done with this and this now. We angles, please review angles. I want you to review angles. On, uh, with this video, so uh, look at that in this video. Now, when we angular measures, okay, the angular measures we have, um, angular measures, uh, we can measure angles. Of course, the first one is degree, degrees. Then we have a radians. And then we have a gradients, gradients. Okay, uh, this is you know in in some calculators you have this as d is g, 
VEG, you see it in your calculator, in your scientific calculator. Uh, radiance, you see RAD, radiance. And then gradients is uh, GRAD. And later on, we can talk about this, but this is not so popular. Uh, in this course, in this course, we shall deal mainly with these two degrees and radians. Now, for this video, please, 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 for this video, I will just teach you with degrees first. Okay, then later on, we will have so many other videos on trig. Trig is a very broad subject. Okay, um, but for this particular video, we'll just do it with degree so that you can follow up. And then uh, other videos will also do the same thing, apply it to radiance. Okay, now, uh, uh, this is the two things we are going to discuss in this course, the degree and radiance. Uh, but I'm going to give you the conversion. The conversion, you have that uh, five, uh, 180 degrees, 180 degrees, of course, this degree is just, you uh, can also write it as just a small uh, zero or O, a small zero uh, as a superscript, superscript. 180 degrees is equal to pi rad radians, which is equal to 200 gradients, grad. Okay? And this is in your, if you, you uh, if you go to your, in your calculator, in your scientific calculator, uh, you might see DRG, you might see this function, DRG, DRG. Uh, the first one means degree. Uh, sometimes you change it in mode. Maybe mode one might be degree, mode two might be radian, mode three might be gradients. Yeah, this is my calculator. Yeah. But we will still go to this, okay? So you can play with it. This is the conversion here. 180 degrees, the pi radian, which is 200 gradients. Now, we're not going to learn this one. We shall just be focused on the green radius. Okay? Comprendez so far? Comprenez-vous? Do you understand what we've said so far? Alright. Now, triangles, please. I would like you to also view this video here. Uh, view the video I did on triangles. I did a video on triangles and then um, on Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Know the... Um, Side classification or lateral. Lateral means sides. Side classification of triangles, which is acute, scaling, and uh, I'm sorry, not acute, scaling, isosceles, and equilateral. That is side classification. Now, angular classification of triangle. You have acute triangle, right triangle, obtuse triangle. Okay, and the rest of them. The same thing with these angles. Okay, if you view the video on that, uh, you have the acute angle, right angle, uh, obtuse angle, straight angle, and the rest of them. Okay, now let's get back to business. Okay, let's get back to the main thing now. The main stop. Let's get back to the main stop. Uh, let us consider. Let us consider a coordinate plane. We consider a coordinate plane. Let's draw a rectangular coordinate plane. So you have a rectangular coordinate plane. Here is your x-axis, right? And here is your y-axis. Y-axis. Right? Okay. Now, as you know, in this rectangular coordinate plane, you have right triangles here. Okay? This is 90 degree. You have four right triangles. Okay. 
Imagine if you draw a circle. So say you draw a circle on this coordinate plane. Draw a circle. So draw a circle. Ooh. <laughs> How do you see my circle? <laughs> Mr. C, come on now. You can do better than this, you are an engineer. Now, draw a circle. Uh, let me, you know, I think, let me try it again. Hopefully, I get it this time. Ah. Mm. You know, this one is not really too bad, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, imagine you have a circle on this coordinate plane, right? Now, let's look at this. This is the positive x-axis. You know that this is positive x-axis. Positive x-axis. This is the positive y-axis. Positive y-axis. This is the negative x-axis, negative x-axis, and this is the negative y-axis. Just like your, you know, your coordinate plane, your graph. That's your graph, your coordinate plane. Okay, now, with a circle, you see that when you draw this circle on the coordinate plane, just like you, in your coordinate plane, you have four parts, right? So this coordinate plane has divided this circle into four quarters. Okay? It has divided this circle into four quarters. So now each of the four quarters, each of the four quarters is called a quadrant. Is called a what we call quadrant. Let me write it with each of the four quarters is what we call I'll use this part instead. A quadrant. Okay? So a uh, quad, quadrilateral, quad, quadrangle. Quadrant, quad, four. Now, a circle, when you come and this is the, this is the positive x-axis. When you come and have an angle here, okay, you have an angle here. This and when you have this ray, when you have this ray, an angle is formed. Okay, when two lines meet, an angle is formed. If you view the video I did on plane geometry, angles part one. Now you see that this is from here, from the positive x-axis to this ray. To this ray, okay? I'm saying ray. Okay, in geometry. Let's call this pipa. Let's call it pipa. We talked about it here that video. This thing is said to be in standard position. Okay? Now what do I mean by an angle being in standard position? If you look at this, just like when you have your rectangular coordinate, you call this origin. Okay? In rectangular coordinate, rectangular coordinate, you call it origin. Okay? Because it's zero, zero. Now, in this circle, we're going to call it vertex. Vertex. 
which is still 0, 0. So, you see here that the vertex is at the origin, which is 0, 0. That's number 1. Number 1 thing about standard position. This positive x-axis is what we call initial side. We call this initial side. I'm going to write it here. Initial side. The positive x-axis. Now, this ray here, that in, from which this angle was formed, is what we call the terminal side. Terminal side. Terminal side. So you see here, and this direction, you see this direction, when you have your clock, let's say you have your clock. You know how your clock is. So, I've done this, so let me rest here. When you have your clock, Okay, you have your clock and you have, uh, this is 12, 12, this is 3, this is 6, and this is 9, right? That's the way you have your clock. Now, if, the, and the clock, the, you have a long hand and a short hand, okay? You have a long hand and a short hand. Alright, now, the clock... If it goes, if it goes, the clock usually, what way does it go? It goes like this. The clock goes like this. Clockwise. This is called clockwise. Clockwise direction. Because that is the way the clock goes. But now, what is the clock, instead of going this way, okay, instead of going like this, it's now going like this. Instead of going like this, it's now going like this. This is what we call anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. And some textbooks will call it or anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Okay, so now in this case, how did this direction go? It goes counterclockwise. It doesn't go clockwise. Clockwise is like this. Counterclockwise is the other way around. Okay, so now, because it goes counterclockwise, we say that this angle is positive angle. The angle is positive. Okay, now, but we have to write some notes now. First of all, let's write the first note here. Initial side. Initial side. Initial side. Okay. Of an angle. In standard position. Angle in standard position. Is the positive x-axis. Is the positive X axis. Now the angle must be in standard position. And I'm gonna give you the definition of what do I mean by an angle being in standard position. So that's the initial side. The positive x axis. This is the initial side. Okay. Then terminal side. Terminal side is the side the that's terminal, the end, the end of that ray from which the angle was formed. Okay, terminal side is that ray from which the angle was formed. Okay, from the initial side, you know, the angle was formed from the initial side, the intersection of the initial side and the terminal side, that created that angle. Remember, angle is intersection of rays. So, uh, the uh, terminal side is that that other side, 
okay the other side from which the angle was formed from the initial side or you can say the terminal side is the side whose intersection with the initial side formed the angle you can write that like that okay um, we're gonna define it now uh, I, you've understood the concept of clockwise direction so I can erase this So, terminal side uh, of an angle, okay, in standard position, okay, is the side whose intersection with the initial side form the angle, whose intersection intersection with the initial side form the angle form the angle okay that's terminal end no end of the side for the uh, since we since we now know what the initial side Term, terminal side means we shall now uh, define what it means for an angle to be in standard position an angle is in standard position if at least two things are met number one the vertex the vertex of the angle the vertex of the angle or you can say end point or the end point okay the vertex of the angle or the end point is at zero zero is at the origin zero zero then number two the initial side is the positive x-axis initial side is the positive x-axis so let's go ahead and write it here please i i am erasing so you can as i'm writing you can take these notes right away because i will i, I am erasing this so that i have space so I have space. Now we can say that an angle is said to be in standard position, standard position if number one uh, the, the vertex or end point the vertex or end point is at the origin is the origin the vertex or end point is the origin is the origin and of course origin is zero zero number two uh, the initial side the initial side is the positive x-axis positive x-axis okay now let's go back to quadrant when we when we rotate when if the angle is formed by a clockwise Rotate, by, by a counterclockwise rotation, the angle is positive. Now, you could still have angle being in standard position, but being negative. Because the angle can also be formed by a clockwise rotation. Uh, for instance, you can have this. You can have, you can have an angle here. Okay? You can have a, a terminal side here, and then this angle is formed. Let's call this beta. <coughs> let's call this beta. And this is still the terminal side here. Terminal side. So in this case, you see the, the beta is also in standard position. 
Theta is in standard position. Beta is in standard position. Okay? So if you look at this, theta, 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 theta is in standard position. Beta is also in standard position. It's also in standard position. Okay? Now, but we say that theta is positive while beta is negative. Why do we say that? Why? Why do we say that? Okay? You can note this. Note. If the angle is formed, if angle is formed by uh, a, a, a counterclockwise rotation, then the angle is positive. If angle is formed by a clockwise rotation, then the angle is negative. Okay? If the angle we did, this is also known as angle, okay? Because we did, I we put that in the video, in that video. If the angle is formed from a counterclockwise rotation, counterclockwise rotation, counterclockwise, okay? Then, if then, then the angle is positive. Else if, if you are writing program now, <laughs> if you are writing a computer program, you can put else, else the angle is negative. Or you can put else if, okay? Now this is one. Number two, if the angle, let me just write number two because some folks here probably will not understand the, uh, the, the conditional statement I used. Now, if the angle is formed, if the angle is formed from a clockwise rotation, clockwise rotation, then the angle is negative. Then the angle is negative. Okay? So that is it. Now, we can draw as many angles as we want to, you know. You could have another angle here. You could have another angle here that is negative. This is the terminal side. You could have it from here. Okay? And maybe let's say that this is a, a gamma. We could have gamma. Okay? We could have another one here. We could have another one from here. Okay? We can have it uh, from here. And this will be uh, tau. Tau. Okay? As many as possible. But just know that if this is the terminal side, you know, Terminal side, initial side, all of them have the initial side as positive x axis. So in this case, you see that theta and tau are positive, beta and gamma are negative. Please don't blame me for using Greek alphabets. I used it in plane geometry angles part one. I've got to use it. You have to get familiar with it. The 24 letters of Greek alphabets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, but I'm going to use Greek alphabets here. For angles, I'm going to use Greek alphabets. Okay? Get used to it, I'm sorry. Now, uh, so that is the thing about positive angles and negative angles. The next thing we do now is this. Let's go back to quadrant. Quadrant. Remember that this is your quadrant. Okay, this is your quadrant. Yeah. So here, remember we like we positive angles counterclockwise. So we are starting with positive. Starting with positive now. Now this area is what we call quadrant one. First quadrant. First quadrant. 
first quadrant. This is called the second quadrant. Second quadrant. Here is the third quadrant. And then here is the fourth quadrant. First, second, third, fourth. So let's let's do the let's look at it here. If we have this, so this is first, second, third, fourth. Fourth, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Okay. Now, some textbooks you can see this as quadrant, 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 and you can see this as one like this, then this two, then this three. Then this four. You can have it in Roman numerals in some textbooks. It's the same thing. Okay. Now, the wherever the terminal side of an angle lies, wherever quadrant, whatever quadrant that the terminal side of an angle lies, we now say that that angle is in that quadrant. Okay. An angle is said to be in a particular quadrant. If the terminal side of the angle lies in that quadrant. Now, remember, an angle is standard position, please. Everything we are going to do here, at least in this particular video, we are looking at standard position. So, just note that. Okay, so we say here, let me, not, let me just erase it here. We say that an angle, an angle is in a particular quadrant in a particular quadrant if the terminal side an angle in a an angle in a standard position please an angle in a standard position an angle in a standard position is in a Particular quadrant, particular quadrant. If the terminal side, if the terminal side of the angle, if the terminal side of the angle lies in that quadrant, lies in that quadrant. Okay. Now, please, for the angles, we're gonna solve here in this video we shall we shall say what quadrant they are and then we shall find the coterminal angle for that all right so uh, that is this an angle in a standard position is in a particular quadrant if the terminal side of the angle lies in that quadrant okay now but what if the terminal side lies on the x axis or y axis which quadrant would you call them? Okay, which quadrant if the terminal side lies on the x-axis or y-axis, like 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees? Which quadrant are you going to call them? So that brings us to if the terminal side, if the terminal side of the angle of the angle in standard position I'm always using standard position lies on the x-axis or y-axis okay then that angle that angle is called a Quadrantal angle. Quadrantal angle. That angle is called a quadrantal angle. Okay. For instance, examples are examples are ninety degrees, one eighty degrees, 
270 degrees, 360 degrees, okay? And the rest of them, now, because we still have more that are quadrantal angles, but they are negative. But they are negative. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Like, if you come and you draw this, you draw, okay, draw your circle, I'm just going to draw the circle, yeah. Now, uh, this here is 90 degrees, okay, because if you, if you follow from here, this angle here, this is what, 90 degrees. It lies on the y-axis. So it's the quadrantal angle, this is the terminal side, this is the terminal side, terminal side, and this is still the initial side, okay, for it to be in standard position, and this is still zero, zero. Now if you draw it again up to here, this is 180 degrees, right, 180 degrees. Here, and it's a quadrantal angle. If you draw again up to here, and it's 270 degrees, and it's a quadrantal angle. If you make a complete revolution, complete revolution now, okay? If you make a complete revolution, one complete revolution back to here, this is 360 degrees, that is a quadrantal angle. But all these were counterclockwise. We could still do it uh, we could still do it uh, uh, clockwise and they are all and they will also be quadrantal angle. And these are positive. Now but if this is like this if this was like this okay this is still the initial side Make here. Here is what? Negative what? Because this is 90. This is negative 90 degrees. Because this is 90 degrees. Negative. This is a quadrilateral angle. Here, negative 180 degrees. Because of this angle plus this angle. Okay? This is a quadrilateral angle. Here, negative 270 degrees. This is a quadrilateral angle. And then here, complete revolution. But now, now, uh, but in the clockwise, clockwise, this is negative 360 degrees. So, I mean, what does this tell you already? You could see that, and you know, because to save time with this video, uh, we are going to stop here. But I want to say something, okay? This kind of tells you, you know, when you had it, when you had it counterclockwise, when you had it counterclockwise, we counterclockwise, you had it this way. So this is still, you have negative 90 degrees, you have negative... 180 degrees, you have negative 270 degrees, you have negative 360 degrees, and more, and more. As we go on, you will see more that are 
quadrantal angles, provided they lie on the axis, they are quadrantal angles. Now, this kind of, I know, before we end, this kind of tells you now that uh, when you did, and that will bring us to cotaminal angles in the next video. When you do, when you do the counterclockwise, this will be 270 degrees. Is that right? Okay. But now, when you do the clockwise, you have negative 90 degrees. So, what does that actually tell you? What does it tell you? It tells you that negative 90 and 270, they are cotaminal. Okay? Negative 180 and the 180 are cotaminal. Uh, 90 degrees and negative 270 degrees, they are cotaminal. Zero and because if you do counterclockwise, this will be zero degrees actually. Zero degrees and negative 360 degrees are cotaminal. So in the next video we will do cotaminal angles and reference angles. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I don't want this video to move on. That's fine. So watch out for next video. Thank you so much for watching. Are you having a great